Did you know that without having to code it yourself, you're able to take boring text and turn it into something as exciting as this? Keep watching to find out how. To get us started here, I just have a pretty basic scene set up with a control node, a grid container, and then underneath everything is just a panel container. So I have a little bit of a background and then my rich text label underneath. Now, as we see, basic text is so boring. And the way that we can improve this a little bit is by selecting one of our rich text labels, navigating over to the inspector where we have our text where we can modify whatever we want. And at the very top, we have BB code enabled. When we turn this option on, this allows us to do our basic and not so basic formatting of our text. Now, the basic formatting is kind of how we would expect. If I come in here and I type in center inside of my brackets, it will center my text. If I want to do anything else, I would continue to put the modifiers with inside of these brackets. So I could do the same thing for making the text bold. We see we do the B. If I wanted to just make specific sections of this text bold, on the other side of the text that I want to make bold, I would just do a slash and then the same command that I was doing inside of brackets. That way it's just going to grab what we want on the inside. There's actually a pretty high number of basic modifications that we can do to our text. And these can be found inside of the Godot documentation. But some of the other ones we can do are like color, where I can specify my color in my brackets. I can say equal, and then this can either be the color code, or I can just type in the color that I want here, and we can turn that text green. So just from kind of a very beginning starting point, we have the ability to modify this basic text and make it a little bit less boring. One of the more interesting things I think that we can do with the BB code is we can make hints appear when we hover over specific sections of text. So maybe I wanna put a hint around basic text. So similarly, I'll just go into that label. We can type in hint. We can type in our hint and say something like, cool text is cool. We can put our end bracket to kind of close this off. And then I just want it on the basic text. So I'll do the same thing with the forward slash and then Hint. We'll notice that within the editor itself, we can see that there is an underline under basic text. But when I run the scene, we can see that now when we hover over the text, we get cool text is cool. So we can start to experiment with these things, play with these things, and get some really interesting informational text within inside of our basic text boxes. These simple modifications can only get us so far. And sometimes we need just a little bit more than what the basic markdown will allow us to do. So if I take a look at this next one, we can start making modifications in other ways. If I type in rainbow, for example, it starts to give me this little rainbow effect on my text. If I move over to the next one, we also have the ability to do a fade. So just a bracket, type in fade and bracket, and we can see that this text starts to fade away a little bit. Now, if we want to adjust how this actually looks and how we modify the effect that we're applying, we can put modifiers within our text modifiers to adjust things. So for the fade, for example, I can type in my start equals, and maybe I'll put this to 10. The second I put my 10 value in there, we'll see that the fade goes a little bit further. If I do 15, if I do 20, we can see that it starts to expand a little bit and we can start to play with how far this fade actually goes. Realistically, if we wanted to, we could do this in a script and we can have it start to appear and start playing with these fade values depending on when we want the text to show up. On my next, text section, we might want to showcase some animations. We like the rotation of the colors with inside of the rainbow. We liked the fade so far, but what if we can shake our text? And once again, just type in my modifier and the text starts to shake. Just like with the fade, just like with a lot of these ones that we're showing, there are modifiers that we can add depending on how busy or how 
mellow we want our text effects to be. Before we get any further, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss any future updates. To showcase this a little bit more, my next effect is going to be called Tornado. Now Tornado is going to more or less move our text in a circle. We start to see that it's arcing, it's also stretching, and it's getting a little bit tighter. But first and foremost, we might notice here that the text itself is actually being clipped by the container that we're in. This might be something that you would want, but if it's not, underneath the control section for the text under layout, we can uncheck this clip context. And now the text will start to spill out a little bit. We can exaggerate this or unexaggerate it if we put in some modifiers. So we can do radius, maybe is 20. We'll start to see that it's being a little bit higher and a little bit more stretched out. If I go to something like 50, we'll start to see it be a little bit more exaggerated here. So these modifiers can help us get the exact text effect that we want. And I'll just go back to maybe 15. We also have the ability for a frequency. If I just type in freak and then maybe 20, we can see it starts to go a little bit faster to, you know, maybe we want to do 0.5 and it'll move a little bit slower. So not only can we put one effect, we can put multiple effects with inside of this. A more mellow version of this, if we don't like the full tornado, is we do have the wave. Again, it's going to be a little bit more mellow. We can once again play with maybe the amplitude and get something that's a little bit crazy. This is almost like a scrolling effect like a matrix, but Depending on what values we put in, we're going to see it do different things. Now, like I mentioned, the tornado is going to go up and down and in and out. The wave is just going to go up and down. And I might want to come into the layout and unclip these contents again, just so we can see it a little bit better. Now, my final effect is going to be something that was added in Godot 4.2. So if you're using anything below that, we might not be able to get it to work. But it's called the pulse. And what the pulse is going to do is it's going to kind of bring the opacity in and out for my text and have it showcase like it is a pulsing strobe light, for example. And we do have the ability to, again, customize these and make them show up faster or slower. If I wanted to combine these effects, I 100% can do that as well. Doing pulse, wave, maybe we'll even throw a rainbow in there to kind of tie us all together. But really being able to use our modifiers for the text with inside of a rich text label kind of blows the basic labels out of the water, depending on what we're trying to do. Yes, we can modify some of this information with a theme. That's not really a problem for us for basic modifications. But if we want to get some of these animations, we want to get some of the color changes, we want to be able to do hints, it's a lot easier to do so with a rich text label. To take this one final step further here is we have the ability to add our own custom ones. If we go into the markup, we have our custom effects that we can add additional elements and hard code our own effects that can be called with inside of the BB code for our text label if we wanted to go through and make those modifications.